All right, now we'll be starting the bidding at 5 million Naira. Can I get a 5 million Naira, anybody? How about five, 5 million? 5 million, all right. 5.5, uh, 5.5, anyone? Anyone in the house? 5.5? 6.5 or like? 6.5, straight to 6.5. Anyone going? Uh, yeah, 6.5? 7 million Naira. 7 million Naira. 7 million Naira. Can I get a 7.1, 7.2? Who's there? I'll Going? Eight million. Eight million naira. Thank you, ma'am. Eight million naira. Now let's see for ten. Ten? Anybody? Nine? Ten? Ten anybody? million. Ten million. Ten, ten, ten million. Ten million naira. Ten million naira to Mr. Emeka. Anybody? Anyone else going? Zambia. Twelve million naira. Twelve million naira. Wow, wow. I, I am in, I'm energized. Is anyone going to go for fifteen million naira? Shock us. Fifteen million naira. Fourteen. Thirteen. Going for twelve. 12 million now going once going twice sold to mr umar gombe ladies and gentlemen nikki okunda is acrylic on canvas pen and ink painted in 2005 a beautiful piece of signs and symbols mr umar gombe step forward and claim your prize hey! <laughs>
which was established to boost creativity, enhance learning, It's like sometimes I only go to school three or four times a week because I don't have enough money or food in my stomach. So I have to go look for how I will get money for my school fees. My school fees by then is 15 shillings. And because my mother died, my father had nothing. My father is like a cleaner, but he's a, he's a craftsman. But he has no money. He doesn't make money through his own art. So that is how I was paying for my school fees. And then, sometimes I have to own. Mm -hmm. But this one shilling, when I finished, I was now doing a babysitter in Kaba. So the one shilling I have, I was now doing the blood is my shepherd, I will draw an angel on her direct. Nike lost her mother at the age of six and her grandmother at the age of seven. Her father, the late Nicholas Ojo Ala, who was also a village traditional drummer and basket weaver in his days, could not help her much to acquire her higher Western education. Nike stopped schooling at the primary C school level at her village at Ogidi Ijumu. However, Nike went ahead to teach herself English at home. She never went to school to study art, which had brought her to the global spotlight. Watching her great-grandmother in the art of Adire textile processing and helping her out in Adire making, Nike walked up the line to become an expert in Adire textile making, dyeing, weaving, painting, and embroidery. This was the vocational training passed down from parents to children in Yoruba communities in those days in Nigeria. Nike steadily built upon what her great-grandmother taught her and went ahead to develop her own unique style and technique in textile design and painting and how to effectively present them for exhibitions. Nike is a multi-talented person who was able to use her natural ability to assist and help the less privileged. In that case, she has been able to give hope to the hopeless in our society. She is an accomplished professional artist, a painter, a textile artist, weaver, embroiderer, and awards winner at many national and international art shows. Nika is a member of national and international professional bodies like Society of Nights with little earnings and no government assistance. 
Oyenike opened the Nike Center for Art and Culture in 1983 in Oshogbo, where she serves as the managing director. She started it with 20 young girls who were marching the streets of Oshogbo aimlessly, and now the center offers free training to all Nigerians in various forms of art. In their tender age, Nika withdrew these girls from the street and provided them with free food, free materials, and free accommodation at her residence at Oshobu and taught them how to use their hands to earn decent livings through the arts. So far, over 3,000 young Nigerians, mainly violated and abused young women, have been trained in the center and are now earning their decent living through arts. Many African countries now send their students to study textile art at the center. The Nike Center for Art and Culture, Oshogbo, now admits undergraduate students from many universities in Nigeria for their industrial training programs in textile design. Center at Piwoi Village, FCT Abuja, with an art gallery and a textile museum the first of its kind in Nigeria, which provides a functional platform for research into Nigerian traditional textile industry in the Federal Capital Territory area of Abuja. In furtherance of this noble endeavors, Nike is currently the managing director and founder of the following organizations in Nigeria. Nike Art Productions Limited, arts largely Nigerian and African, as well as Nike's second text devotion and dedication towards the promotion of art and culture in Nigeria. Just to mention a few of her recent time awards and public recognition of her noble efforts in developing the society and mankind, in May 2006, Nike was awarded Odin della Stella della Solidarietà Italiana, one of the highest Italian national awards of merit by the government of the Republic of Italy in appreciation of her efforts in using arts to address and solve the problems of Nigerian prostitutes, that is sex workers in Italy. In appreciation of her cultural heritage, Captain TV crew paid a visit to the Nike Art Gallery in the Federal Capital Territory. The trip to the Art Gallery, which is located at Kilometer 7.5 Abuja International Airport Road, Central Piwoi is a 22-minute drive from our location, Kantampi Extension, as we encountered no traffic. The area is a small village inhabited by a group of Bai natives who are regarded as original FCT indigents. We were aided by the tour guide and workshop manager of the gallery, Abimbola Uluwalowo, who brought to our knowledge that every artwork in the gallery, including the buildings, has a historical representation backing them up. We know that this place is the Nike Art and Culture Gallery. Yes, so yes. can you tell us about this place? Okay, actually, right from where we are now, you know, we're actually now entering to the main gallery, but this place actually called Sculpture Garden. Because here, everything you see around actually depicts art. It looks like something that you can look and then be creative like that. So we have art gallery and we have workshop. And also we have like a museum so that we preserve different things that you can see in the olden days as well too like that. So we are on a workshop, we train people on how to do art. And in the gallery, we kept some several artistic work there from the work of our chief, the gallery, the owner of the gallery, Chief Sneke Yokondai, to other famous artists like Ken Di Balogun, Ayodeji, Jimon Brahma, and so on and so on and so forth. So can you give us a brief history about this gallery? Okay, for example, like uh, the Nike Art Gallery actually started from Osobu in Osun State. And then from there, after I started the Osobu Gallery and the workshop, then she proceeded and actually our established one in Lagos. Our gallery in Lagos actually is the largest gallery in West, West Africa for now. And then she established that under one in Ogidi, in Kogi State, where she actually came from before she now established the Abuja Art Gallery in 2002. Yes, I've got gallery here. She mostly she do it to empower people because they have trained a lot of youth and women. See, both an adre, batik painting and several other several creativity work like that. She actually do normally empower both women and youth. Since I'm bit on season, several times like that. Sometimes cut out this one here. Like okay, as you let him come from this building now. It's called Bed House. Oh. Yes, the first king. In Osobo, in Osun State, this is how they build this palace. If you look at the shape, you can see the mouth, and you can see the wing as if you want to fly. It's called Bed House. 
you know, in the olden days, most of the edifices are different things to see as well. They didn't just build at that time, you know, like actual actual plan now. That's something just normally like, look like. So also in the olden days, someone really like a particular animal, like like can look like a fish. That's how they build in the olden days as well too. Like if you if you go behind that place, so that's another one there. That's what they call tortoise house. The shape is full of tortoise. So, but like this one now, the first king, the king Atau Yawusu Bro, this is how they build his first palace in Osun State. The house is still there now in Osun Grove, and Osun Grove is under UNESCO. Okay. Yes. And this one is also the same thing. It's also the same thing. And this place, this one is our stage. Whenever we have a cultural dance and cultural troupe that comes around to entertain people, because sometimes it normally be like artist night or cultural night in this place. Sometimes, and even though sometimes we do host at some different different embassies. Sometimes in cultural occasions, several cultural occasions. So we normally use this place as a stage where our cultural performers or actors or actresses normally perform. Nika's method of communication with her artwork is through signs and symbols. Communicate with signs and symbols. For example, somebody's not around and your wife gives birth, there's something they can send to you, like a leaf, sponge, and then soap. As soon as you look at it, you know you have given birth, and also whether it's a male or female, even if it's twins or triplets, you get, you get to know. And also, if your king is looking for a friendship in another kingdom, or also you're looking for a problem in another kingdom, they can send something they call like a sign and symbol to each other. So those things, Chief Miss Nick normally used it to combine them together to make motifs and patterns on her own works. And actually make her works very, very big and also unique as well too. That's when time you look at our work, it's always full of patterns and motifs like this. Which can be displayed in diverse forms, are used to express feelings, emotions and ideas and are majorly important in history as they are used to tell stories. Artworks help curb environmental pollution as some sort of the art materials are recycled and promote waste control. The way we do our tie and dye, the way we eat, the way we live, that is the work I really want people to see. Turn it trash to treasure because a lot of the people using waste. Okay, this is our CEO. Her name is Chief Mrs. Oyenike Monica Okondai. That's where the name Nike Art Gallery came from. She's the owner and chief curator of Nike Art Gallery worldwide. And so, as an artist herself, enterprising person, and also an art collector, that's why you see her in the gallery here. Because in a, here in our gallery, you have several artistic work. When we go into the main gallery, you're going to see several other artistic work as well, too. And out of several work we have here, we have stone carving, we have wood carving, we have painting, sculpture, mixed media, fiberglass work, textile, ceramics, and so on and so forth. Just like Every work they see sometimes, there are some artists that just paint based on what they see, and there are some artists that are painted based on they want to tell the story. For example, in the olden days, this is one of the normally text story in Africa. If something happened in the land, the king can tell an artist, okay, come and tell us this, come and write this particular story for us, either on a stone or on a wood. And at that time, the artist would now compress the story and write on a stone, so they can, they can just enter into any palace, so they can tell you a story about what stone you see, or look at the pillar. If you go visit the king, king can tell you the story about what particular pillar that you are watching. For example, like this one you see here. This one here, this is Ogun. Ogun is called the god of iron. And this is not the one that probably people say, okay, they worship. There's a story that behind it. This king in Ilefe, the first king in Ilefe, when most of Yoruba clay originated from, his name is called Odudua. But when he died, none of his prince, I mean prince was around at that time. So, would they would say, okay, since this must die now, so let's look for somebody to come and tell him. In case if any of the prince come back, they would, that person would just step aside for the person. And they, they, they look for somebody who is a blacksmith and also a warrior, which is this Ogun. And after they discover, one, two years, they discover that all of them has become king, whatever they have, a lack of a or a gulela. So they confirmed the Ogun as the king of Ilefe and they gave him a title called Orni of Ife. It means you don't have it, but we'll give it to you. That's the meaning of Orni. Even up to now, that's the first class king in Ilefe called Orni of Ife. It was popular. But the name of his title is called, it means you don't have it, but we give it to you. And like this one, this one is wood carving. What especially, they use this one in the olden days to make a pillar in the palace. What they do is that when you go visit the king, you and king can be there for like, well, be one pillar like this for maybe two to three hours. And he will tell you a story about it because all the symbols that you see have several things you represented and 
all the image you see on it have several roles to play, just as if you are watching a movie. And what happened is that the king will tell you the story uh, because the artist can compress the story of something that happened in land for 50 to 100 years and compress it on this one particular like this. So king has to learn from the hub sometimes or tie from the down to tell you the story about what really happened in the land. That's one of the way we normally document the story and history in Africa in the olden days. And among the other, of others, the part of several work that we have, we have here, like this one, another craft works of one of our artists. And you know, you can see this one now, as you use aluminium can to create this one. Most time we we'll just drink aluminium can, maybe coke or malt. What we do most time we just throw it away. So an artist use aluminium can to make this one. Yes, and he embossed to make it. And this is a portrait of Professor Walito Yinka, as you can see. Yeah, and this one is painting. This is painting one of one of our foremost artists in Nigeria. His name is called Ken De Balogun. It's early on canvas. Ken De Balogun, normally any time you know, separate artists with several medium or several way, normally do their own painting or their own creativity, anything they want to do at all, or sculpt. So what well, he normally use oil on canvas, at any time you see his work like this, his own style, normally do women, draw women from the back. He said, one thing is that the African women that can trust them and commit things in their hand. For example, if you give African women, you put them in the house, you don't need to monitor about your children, they are going to take care of your house. This will do, if, if talking about appointment, any time you give them appointment, probably in the office, definitely they might do beyond what you think they will do. Sometimes they even do more better than the women, than the men. So he said, in respect to African women so much, you don't even see their face. When you comment something in your hand, definitely they're going to deliver beyond what your expectation. So that's why, that's the reason behind the idea. And like this one, you see, this one here is a fiberglass. Fiberglass is another medium of artwork. But what you see here, this one actually is something like it's liquid. But it can become solid. What is the context? So when you mix it and it expose to the oxidation, then later it becomes solid. But before artists do that, the first thing we do is that you first create a mood. How do you want your artwork to look like? And after you do that, and then you mix the content of fiberglass, and you pour it inside. So when you open it, when you expose it, then it becomes solid and it becomes. So this one is not that heavy, as you think it may be like this, probably like a cement or something like that. And if you look at it in a cultural way, this is actually, okay, I know there are several ways we normally do our traditional marriage in Africa. Because we have a very strong culture for the marriage and some other things like that too. Not like maybe in a British or in some other Western country. Someone can call the father and dad just got married. I know in Africa, your father or your mother will have to be dear. So like this one now is from, from eastern part of Nigeria. The bridegroom and the bride and the groom, both their family and friends are going to be there. So now the father of the groom, the bride will give uh, this on. So you can go and look at your husband and give it to him. So the, sometimes look even look dramatic. The wife just tend to look for this and whatever is hidden. And then when, after you finally find him, then give this the husband this horn. And he can ask for the money and then say, okay, yes, that's so hot, you husband depends to marry. Yes. And this one was made, it's only metal sculpture, and it was made with school boats. You know, the artists take patient to weld this school together like this to create this one. It's one of our one of our work of our amazing artists as well to this place. And then here we have Calabas. You know, there are different artists that do several things. This one is a work of art. Although sometimes if you come, if you go some part of Nigeria, as you come, but if you look at Calabas separately, one of Calabas, one of the things that really me look the same as synonymous in Africa, you see Calabas. Because several tribes and several people have several things they are using Calabas for. For example, if you go to the south part of Nigeria, they preserve cola inside Calabas. And then sometimes they even keep money inside it. If you go to the east part of Nigeria, they used to fetch water. If you go to the south side, they used to eat food. If you go to the middle bed, they cut the inside. I used to, you can float on the water, you used to, to swim across the water. If you go to the north part of Nigeria, they used to sell locally milk, processed milk. This is no, no, and flora as well too. So several people have several things they are using calabas for, but it takes a lot of art to design it as well too. And this one is a mask. You know, every time we look at a mask like this, the first thing that comes to our mind is a masquerade. Yes, but beyond that, in Africa, what we use mask for is beyond mask because in the olden day, when someone deserves accolade in the land, the king can use, can present the mask to somebody in form of a word. And the symbol that you need to determine how powerful that person is in the land at that time. So some people, they have the symbol, some, people, some, some symbol can be in form of elephant or lion. Probably if I were in the land, your own symbol can be like elephant, it's so that you're clearly powerful. The land, or if you have like a lion as well, too, probably a king, you're doing a ruling in that particular city. So yours can be like so. 
or if we are a peacemaker, Joe could be, the symbol could be like a, like a dove in the olden days. Like this one, you know, is this a form of med, another medium that King normally pass message across to people under his domain during this. Like today now, if probably president or governor or anybody or king want to pass message across, they either go through their essay media or media house, as you have you people, or several ways like that. But in the only day, the king normally have this word called tank crier. The tank crier will move around and then anytime he move around, probably a city or a ranch or a square, once he get there, he's going to beat this gong in his hand. And people, as soon as, as people notice that, they gang together and then come to listen to what he's trying to say. And sometimes he can move around in the, he can move around in the morning, uh, probably in the early, early in the morning. So to come and disturb your sleep, it can be like a sign. If it is on probably twice, you knew that probably a particular market has been canceled or everybody to assemble at the place square in the evening at that time. So it can be in form of probably like a sign or sometimes it can be like a form of aura. It creates your attention to gather you and then pass through information across to you. In the olden days, king normally sit down a throne and pass through and have to preside over the affairs that have to do with the kingdom in that time. And cabinet member normally sit down around him. Then here, if you look at this one, it's work of our, one of our amazing artists, yeah, Joseph Eze. Yes, Joseph Eze is one of our famous artists and versatile artists as well too. If you can look at this one, you can see that they cut slippers to create this one. Yes, each of those slippers actually represent a, a person. He tried to depict how Lagos is very crowded in the streets. You know, Lagos is a place that a lot of people live in, but sometimes most of them come out once at, I mean, by day. So if you look at Lagos Street, every plot that you look in Lagos, it's already crowded. So that's where I got this idea from. And you can see a few houses on it. Trying to talk about it in Lagos, there are so much, much people, but there are a few houses there in Lagos. Yes. And like this one, it's trying to showcase how we normally do at the in the olden days, our element used to do at the in the olden days. You know, for example, in the olden days, anything we use at that time, there's nothing like chemical. Probably like today now, we have like some other color that we might want to do, probably we just import the colors. But in the olden days, our element, what they do is that they go to the farm, get the cassava, and soak the cassava into the water. After that, they bring it out and turn it into powder. That powder, they boil the water and soak it, and then turn it, it becomes something like amala. So they make the amla so watery, so it become paste. So that piece they used to design on a fabric. And what they do is that they have leaf. I'm going to show you the indigo when we go to the workshop. There's particularly the mali used to dye that time, it's called indigo leaf. So that leaf, they process it, and then it becomes indigo. So they show the fabric, but the effect of the cut paste to the fabric, it prevents the color of the fabric from the dye. For example, the color of the fabric, initially the white is white, and then they used paste to design on it. All the powder paste on the fabric, the dye will not penetrate. So when it dyes to the indigo color, when you bring it out again and scrape it with the, the, the paste out of the fabrics, those parts, the design, everything they put on it, is going to appear in the color of the fabric, and the other one will go for the color of the dye too. Yes. Like this one now, this one is Adre Eleko, the indigenous one that Elemola used to do in the olden days, as I was telling you. So this one, and they use a cassava paste to do this one. And this one now is putting this one, which is new candle wax batik. It's kind of wax to do this one. I can see. So it's a process that we, we made the wax and then we use it, we dip the foam into it. I'll use the foam to design on the, I mean, on the, on the fabrics. Later, then we dye it to any color. It can be like one color or two color. So later, we soak the fabric into the hot water to remove the wax so that it becomes normal fabrics like this again. This another amazing artist. His name is Balaji Ogunwo. Yes, Balaji Ogunwo too is one of us. He's managed by our CEO here. And it might draw, you do, it might do a monochrome settings like that, paintings. Like he doesn't use much color to do his own work. Like, and this one too is on that set of Toba, Toba Festival. There's a lot of people on the horses and trying to do several races and so on. And this another works. He's actually a Ghanaian, but the money you are see who, the price of this one is actually 9 million era. Wow. Yes. His name is Mova Lezo. Oh, into its diverse collection of arts by number. Like it before. Another thing is that, uh, although let me not talk about government, because it's not, it's just like general talk, but another thing there is that for people also that want to do the art, sometimes they should need to do it in a way that is, if they if they are the one if they are the client, they should be able to buy it. For example, you should put enough energy and enough creativity in everything you are doing. 
But if people see it, they definitely do. You just have to buy it. They don't have option. And apart from that one too, there's plenty of challenges as well too. Yes, of course. And apart from that one too, let's say, okay, light. You know, because to preserve as well, even though this one now, we're trying a lot of money to preserve it because we can't just leave it. Some, we need to own AC and then separate things for it like, and as well too. And if the government can start doing much more exhibition too for artists, artists, a lot of artists need a lot of exhibition in India because we have so much artists. Naked Glory has tried a lot to promote a lot of artists. But still outside there, there's so much more art. people who have talented, they have a lot of creativity that government can still support them in one way or the other. So that if people are not hungry, they cannot be able to sell their work below what they are not supposed to sell it. Because that work can be able, until when you are get to a particular level, because before this work can sustain you. If not, believe me, you start begging people how to, be, how to buy it. And that's one it's part of the thing that really devalue the artist. Because artwork should be something that when you price it, you can't buy it. It should tell you to leave it. The Nike Art Center attracts This work founder, amazing artist, his name is called Rotimi Akinere. You know, if you look at this work now, the method is, is, is meant, uh, it's called pointillism, because you can see most of them like a point, 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 like to achieve it. You can see walkways, the tree and beautiful flowers. But if you look beyond that, there are faces on it. It's called faces of nature. Can you see the face? Yes. This is another face. This is another face. Yes, so there are faces on it. You know, just trying to, yes, yeah, this is another face. Yes. Just trying to talk about, for example, if you are living in a bushy area that only you can never be alone, if you think that you only use there, no, there are other some things that are clearly looking at you. It's not talking about anything we do in life, we just be careful whatever we do, because that's the highest that's looking at everybody at every point in time. As part of its contribution to the society in fighting the unemployment rate that is currently ravaging the Nigeria. It's the one that's too soft, you cannot work. It's the one that's too hard, you cannot work. So this one is high density. So we trim into the pencil shape and then we soak into the wax, dig into the wax to absorb the wax. Then bring it back to the fabric to design the fabric. So what's the wax in there? The wax, we get fabric from crude oil. You know, when you, when you draw some, it's a fabric product we can get from crude oil, like petroleum, I mean, kerosene. So that's where we get the wax from as well too. But that's another wax called bee wax. We get the under bee wax from the, from the bee as well too. But this one we are using is can is a paraffin wax. A different way we do different patterns like that as well too. Different creases that way like too. So this one now is, is, is pattern work. So she have already see, the first thing she did to the fabric is she do marbling works on it. Because it cap, she make a claw on it, display of claw on it that look like a marbling forms. And then now she's using foam to design on it. So after now she's going to take it another color. So the, what you see is that the, the first light on it is going to reflect all this part, the line you are seeing, and this one as well too. When she takes the final color, she's taking it. So all the ashes are made from the pot, inside a particular pot, you perforate the pot under, and then hard water to it. And then when you see that water, you, you soak the water, you soak this one through before, and leave it for 11 days. After that 11 days, it's going to ferment. And then so when you dip your fabric, you can achieve the navy blue color inside. The first time you dip your fabrics, if you don't leave it long, you achieve something like very light blue, like a sky blue. So the more you leave it there, the more it's getting darker. As like this leaf now, if you rub this leaf in your hand now, it's going to change the color of your hand to the navy blue. Yes. As one of Nigeria's hidden treasures, the center aims to positively transform the neglected art and culture industry in Nigeria and create the enabling environment for growth and foster the spread of African cultural heritage. Me. It, it call, this one is called tortoise house, because if you look at the building, the structure, it's a, the building form of tortoise. You can see the mouth here, and then that's the leg. And then if you see, I mean, the hub, the roof, it's like the back of tortoise. Uh, like, not a part of Nigeria, we have Fulanese. So, would they build, sometimes for their king, they build house like this for their king, sometimes like that. And if you go to inside, you can see how they used to put their beds. They normally put their beds in this place, and then they cook food in this place. So, this place normally looks like their parlor. Yes. And beside here now, they have a chair there. So anytime they have visitor, you can sit down. Anytime they have visitor, so you know, and they want to have anything to discover the visitor, mm -hmm. they normally sit down. So this is a table. Yes, this one, this one is a table. This one is a chair. Like this one is a stool. So sometimes you can relax their leg on it, or if they probably want to eat, you can put place their food also on it. 
and without any further discussion, or sometimes it can even be in the night, they just invite their visitor and then they sit down and then they discuss about what they want to discuss. Like that. Okay. So this one, this one is Silos. Silos? Yes.